A little shy, everyone. Laodon is a language that is meant to help you express your perceptions more clearly and explicitly. And as a result, the creator of the language, Suzette Hayden Elgin, as well as the early Laodon community, came up with some pretty interesting words to describe things you might have experienced in your life, but have had no words for. Until now. So the first word I'll share with you is belith, to linger over something that one has the skill to complete quickly. This spoke to me on a personal level, as someone who used to work as a software developer, where you'd have to be at the office from like 8 to 5, and you could potentially finish something quickly, but because there was a set amount of time you were supposed to be at the office, uh, you tend to make your work expand to fit the amount of time you're sitting around. So, this was something that I experienced a lot, Bolith, to kind of linger over the work that had to be done for the day, because if I did it fast, then, well, either you'd just still be sitting around waiting for more work because you have already taken what you had, or you'd just be assigned even more work. So you'd just be working double for the same amount of money. The second word is ah, yeah. <laughs> I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, whenever you see an accented letter, it has a high tone, and then an unaccented letter is low, well, not like just a neutral tone. So anytime it's high and then neutral, it's basically a falling tone. So ah, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. I guess it kind of sounds like, oh, what the heck? But uh, this word means a mysterious love. There are a lot of words for love in Laodon, different types of love. But this one is the mysterious love where you're not sure if it's welcome or not yet. Sometimes you're just busy in your life and you're like, I don't have time to have feelings for this person right now. Or maybe you don't really know enough about the person to really know if this is a good person to feel feelings for. So, um, sometimes you just kind of feel, ah, yeah. Okay, once you're done with the mysterious love stuff and are in an established relationship or have some really good solid friendships or just around your family, people you're comfortable with, I thought this word was really good. Relehana, for silence that is comfortable and natural. So, not that awkward silence you get, like on the first date or something, but you've been together, or you've been with your friends for a long time, you are fine with just existing together. And so you have a, a comfortable silence. It can be, you know, just sitting in the car together and traveling, and you don't necessarily have to talk about anything, but you're just, you're there. You're present together. Here's another one that relates to my programming career, but Dedehal, the beginning career, early career, first jobs you job you take after college. So for me, it was also the jobs where you get taken advantage of the most, where they pay you really low amounts because you don't have very much experience, but they still pay you less than you probably deserve to earn. So that was my experience with my did a haul. Did did de haul <laughs> uh, was basically getting ripped off. And this one also reminds me of the tech field. Valo Volo is non-thunder, where someone is talking and just making a lot of noise over something that they don't really have a lot of knowledge about. Um, so basically, in a sense, hot air. And so you find this a lot. You'll find people who are really good at seeming very confident in what they're saying. And when you, if you actually know field and you're listening to them, then you know if they're bullshitting or not. So for example, a few weeks ago I went to our school's computer club and one of the students behind me um, was like, oh yeah, to solve this problem I used an if-then loop. And I was just sitting there like he has no idea what he's talking about because he's so confident about it. Other students are probably like really impressed by this guy. So I also was there with a student of mine who, is, who had a lot less confidence in themselves. So, you know, I kind of pointed that out. I was like, hey, you know, you might feel like everyone else is doing better in the class than you are, but you really can't tell based on the person's confidence. So don't judge it based on 
how much the person seems to think they know about a topic. Um, the only real way to judge that is to know yourself, I guess, and then be able to say, yeah, this guy is just spouting some BS. Well, this list of 10 words seems to have a theme going. Uh, maybe next time I'll have a list of 10 words not related to my work experience. But here's a word I will try to now pronounce. Hale, hade, ha, hal, which means your work is constantly being interrupted. As a software developer, companies I worked for, almost all of them, gave you an open floor plan office. And my most recent job that I left as a software developer um, over a year ago, I had the first desk at the entryway to the software developer wing. And so people were always talking to me as like I was the receptionist of the programming area and I was trying to get my work done. So, yes. Hale ha de ha 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 something like that. Okay, I just thought this one was very lovely. Um, when it rains, it's nice to hear the sound of the rain on the roof, or if you're outside, the rain on the leaves. And it's starting to be autumn now, so that's even like just more atmospheric. Uh, so the sound of rain on the roof is the combination of the words rain and song. So, la le lom. And then if you're thinking about the sound of the rain on the trees, or on the leaves of the trees, it's uh, la lim, <laughs> la lim mi lom. I am also not very great at pronouncing these yet. La lim, la lim, la lim mi lom. La lim, la lim mi lom. <laughs> Okay, back to the theme of work, though this applies more to my job now as a teacher than my job as a uh, software developer because I was able to not bring my work home very often as a software developer, but as a teacher, that's not true. So a non-holiday is a holiday where there's more work than if you had just stayed at work anyway. Um, so ra did din so this one's rising tone because it's a neutral and then um, high tone ra did in um, so for me if it's like spring break or thanksgiving break it just means i'm going to be using that time to do more class prep and catch up on grading homework or between the semesters i use that for class prep not grading anything but just prepping for the class or making lectures writing assignments doing stuff to try to offload the massive amount of work I'd have to do during the semester. So, um, not so much with the guests, having guests over and stuff, like, I don't know, I, I haven't really hosted any guests, I always live in a small place, but the rest of it is true. Working and not much of a holiday. All right, if you're introverted, you've probably felt this before. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, so being alone at last after a tiresome experience. Uh, the dictionary entry is a little garbled, so I just added in or tiresome people. It's a tiresome experience or people. Um, but yeah, so if you are an introvert, generally, um, being around people takes energy, whereas I've heard being extrovert is like being around people gives you energy. So um, when I'm teaching a lot or just socializing because I run like the local Esperanto group or other activities or something where I'm out and about with people, sometimes at the end of the day you're just like, I need to be alone and just play some video games or watch YouTube and not deal with people. Um, not that you don't like people, it's just that it's it's very draining if you're around people for an extended period of time. So, this is a good word for people like me. Okay, this one's going to be difficult to say because of that LH in there. But according to the beginner um, guide on the LawDownLanguage.org site, uh, it says, press your tongue against the roof of your mouth, 
uh, draw the corners of your mouth like you're smiling, and then try to say sh. So, let's see. Uh, uh, something like that, maybe? So, ra real sh. Ra real sh. Or something like that, I don't know. The LH is basically, if you're familiar with Esperanto, the equivalent of ach. Or basically a suffix, prefix, affix that you can put in there anywhere in a word to make it um, basically mean like bad or evil or just uh, not not in good faith type of thing. It could be bad or with like bad intentions or um, just terrible or something like that. So slight lesson there. Um, but yes, so one of the things Ladon has uh, kind of gotten me interested in learning more about which you know you kind of like don't even realize that it is an interest until you start realizing that it's so unrecorded but just studying the history of women um, so this word Ravel <laughs> is to deliberately refrain from recording. So the example it gave was the failure to record the accomplishments of women throughout history. So I've been spending a lot more time learning about women throughout history because women have always existed and they've always accomplished things and they've always been working. Uh, I think that when I was a kid, kind of the general idea of like history was the men are out doing stuff and the women are like always confined to the house but that's not true um, not everyone has had the uh, money to be able to pay to support a stay-at-home wife um, and throughout history you know life has been tough so women haven't just been sitting around in the home in 100% of the cases for everything if, uh, if there's not a lot of money, the women work throughout history, make money. They make less money than the men. Um, and so, stuff like that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the history of women, I would really suggest picking up the book, um, Who Cooked the Last Supper? Let me pull it up here really quick. I've been reading this book, um, and it's really given me more perspective on things. And I think it's a really good book to read. Screen capture over here. Who Cooked the Last Summer Supper? <laughs> uh, the Women's History of the World by Rosalind Miles. So I'd really suggest checking that out if you're interested. And of course there's a lot of other books as well. Um, I don't have as much time to read as I would like. But I try. Uh, yep. <laughs> so anyway, um, I have more words on my list of interesting entries from the Laudon Dictionary, but I'll save them for another time. We'll do some more ten, top ten lists some other time, or just some kind of uh, aggregation of interesting things or words or ways to build words in Laudon. Um, but one of the cool things about learning these words is I find myself asking myself, like, is there a word for, and then some experience I'm having, um, throughout the day. It's like, ah, there's not a word for this feeling. Arr. And then, you know, with lot on, I try to go and try to build a word around what that feeling is or what that experience is, or just even asking other people, like, do you have a word for this? Um, yeah, so, uh, learning about Laudan in general has expanded my thoughts on words and usage of language, as well as my study of history and focusing more on what women have been doing throughout history, and trying to find that, because it's not, uh, it just hasn't been recorded much. And you see that in tech as well, I mean, women have always been in tech. But a lot of the time, women's names weren't allowed to be on academic papers. And it was just kind of like, that's how it is. And so, you know, a lot of history's just been erased. But, um, to go back to the other note of building words to uh, describe our perceptions, 
now that you've discovered some new words that could help you describe your experiences better, specifically like in the workplace, if you're not getting your work done quickly, um, now you can maybe start thinking about what you're experiencing and how you describe what you're experiencing and if there are any kind of gaps in English vocabulary that you would like to have filled. So how can you use Laudon to help you better describe your perceptions? So I'll have more on this later on. Um, I'll try to post some more videos. I just get so busy with things because I am overworked and underpaid. So I will talk to you guys later. Uh, thanks for watching. Allah and uh, Aril. Bye!